just trial it a bit on the on the ground. You know, remember what I did uh, uh, the other day. Just twirl it a bit and see if he if he can keep him standing there because as I said it's not the whip that the that is the intent but your body language so he needs to understand that the whip means a different thing if your body is presenting itself differently. Another thing where you also want to be careful is when you hold the yeah the the rope that you don't have um, a, a loop around your hand because if he pulls and it pulls tight you can actually break uh, your fingers. So if you, see if you can change the rain now. I don't know whether you noticed the other day when I was doing it, at some point I actually stepped over my lunge whip rather than lifted it up. Just to make sure that I don't upset him. So at the moment you can get away with it, but if he's more wound up, that would probably be enough to set him off. So I just, I just kind of put put the tip on the ground and stepped over it. The other thing that, that I would also do is I probably wouldn't hold the whip like that at him. Just I, I'm always inclined to have it rather pointing down than, than, than up. Or even if you don't need it, hold it maybe the other way around so it points away from him. Just see if you can stand in that hula hoop ring. So now, yeah, yeah, change the rope in the other hand because otherwise he feels he can't move on, yeah. And just go, you step in that ring now. And stay in the ring. Yeah. Uh, at a moment like that, it's good to have that extra little little bit. Um, so I think the tap that you gave him, that I think that was appropriate because he wasn't with you and he looked like he was going to 
just think about lying down and rolling. Stay in the ring. Stay in the ring. The, the reason why I said to you to step in the in the ring and try and stay there is unfortunately I don't have a video of your body language before but you were going after him the whole time Walking, yeah yeah, the yeah. and and it, it was actually quite in order to, I think you were trying to keep up with him and it looked quite forceful and it looked like you were after him yeah. and just by staying more stationary and having a much um, stiller and calmer body posture I think he he felt that he could be calmer as well and I think that's really important and I did say in it also that I think it's very important that the horse is confident that it can come come back to you yeah good okay just yeah ask him to walk on I think that was an external thing there Stay in the ring. And you see also how important it is to have someone there because I think if I wasn't standing here to tell you to stay in the ring, you, you, you'd be all over the place. Okay. Okay, the way you're holding your body posture now is a little bit like you're after him again. Just for now, just to... Yeah, good. Just for now, maybe just put the whip down for the moment and see how he is then because it looks a bit like you're after him with the whip a little bit. But let's see whether you can keep him going without the whip because they catch on to that very quickly. Yeah, that's it. He wanted to come in, but you didn't let him. That's good. Yep, stay in the ring. <laughs> he's trotting, just let him roll a bit. No, no, he still has to, yep. Oops. That's when, the, when you want the extra bit of rope because then you get a bit less jerk. <coughs> stay in the ring stay in the ring Oops. by not staying in the ring um, Sarah is allowing the horse to push her feet around and that means that 
he has made a move and is dominant mm -hmm. in that situation. See if you can get him to trot again. Just do one little stomp in his direction. Notice that Sarah just used her right foot um, to stomp, which she's supposed to use to drive him on, but the right foot is the one closer to the shoulder rather than closer to the hindquarter. I would have tried to drive him from behind. From oh, he's not paying attention now. Now you need to make yourself more compelling to him than what's going on out there. So he's getting very distracted here, and by getting distracted, he stops to listen. He uh, is uh, disobedient, starts showing conflict behavior, and this is getting a bit worse and worse. And here we have that leaning forward posture again that leaves you very, very vulnerable to being pulled over. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't really know which is this bad sign. I think, I think that may be, yeah. And really, he, is. Sarah is not Aye. assertive enough. She needs to um, get into him a bit shall, more. Shall I, it's all a question I of dosage, but a there's moment. not a high enough dose here. His uh, conflict behaviour was uh, starting to get out of hand, and here you can see I wasn't ready for that. Right, also, you can't yeah. see it in the video, but uh, my lunch work was a little bit in the way <laughs> of having a good uh, grip in front of the knot. Um, so I kind of had to let go of him. I couldn't hold on to him enough. I've heard you do that before. I can't let low breathing. Stop. And here you're getting a few minutes of what I was up against in the first session. In the first session, when I first learned to, well, we don't have the video, he was like that and worse. Um, for about 10-15 minutes, it was a right proper fight um, and uh, I actually ended up having to go into one of the corners, I think I said that in my previous video, because I needed to have two sides where he could not try and escape on the free circle in the centre of the arena. He can escape the whole time and gets a drift and a pull um, uh, that is kind of un hinged if you want, uncontrolled. And you can see how I'm holding the extra little bit of slack there for myself. And you can see my arms up on my side. I'm quite upright. I'm absolutely not leaning forward. Um, so I can be ready to be leaning back if he pulls against me again. There was that little stomp with my left foot to drive him forward. And um, again, I had the feeling I was going to go uh, flying uh, a few times like uh, in the first session And here you can see again how I actually let go of that rope. Now, if he, if he's 
starts to learn that, yeah. then we need to get a different uh, yeah. thing. At the moment, this is coincidence, okay? Yeah. But they can actually learn that. Like that, I will use something different. Yeah. And here you can see I let go of that rope again. That gave me a little bit of extra time to ground myself. Stop it.
most time it's proper a good exercise is I think he's like he's like he's checked in. Um, a good exercise is to see how much energy you need. To keep the horse going, to keep him to speed him up a bit and slow him down. Proper without upsetting the horse and yeah. without getting an overreaction. Yeah. Stomp for the right stop. foot now to drive him from behind. My left foot would have cut him off on this rein. He's looking for approval. Come. You can have a mint walk. Come. Come. There's the hind leg again. The hind leg sitting behind. Come. Come. Probably thinks you should go to him. Come. Ready. What do you think I'm going to do? Keep Come here, come. Yes. There you go. I think that the, the reluctance also tells me quite a lot. The reluctance to come in. So, have they not been very nice to you then, huh? Walk on. Walk on. Yeah. Good. George, can you trot again? Trot. <laughs> That's a trot, isn't it? My legs are not left behind. Good boy. They haven't been nice to you, have they, I think? Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh, have they not, not been nice to you? Mm. Can you walk on again? Walk on. Walk on. Yes, good. Good boy. to completely get the trust. George, can you do one more trot?
end was quite good, yeah. so I'll leave it at that. Um, but there, there's a de definite lack of trust issues, mm. you know. I think he's been rather mm. forcefully trained, is my feeling, and I think we have to get that out of him so he can do stuff calmly and yeah. is not worried about everything yeah. that we do <coughs> ask.